Welcome to the day four notes, which starts section 8.3, logarithms and logarithmic functions. Woo! I bet you all are excited. I'm sure you've seen logs on the ACTs that you've taken before and you've heard about them, so we are finally starting logs, which is the main part of this chapter. Um, students have two views on logs. Some students think that logs are really difficult. Some students think that logs are really easy. All I can tell you is you need to memorize what is a log and the properties and then it should be smooth sailing from there. Today we're just going to talk about converting from exponential to logarithmic form and then the other way. You will not need a calculator for today's video. So first we should talk about what is log form. So the inverse of f of x equals 3 to the x, so this is y equals 3 to the x. The inverse just means flip x and y. So the inverse is x equals 3 to the power y. The variable y is called the logarithm of x. So instead of writing it as x equals 3 to the y, this is the same thing as log base 3 of x equals y. So here is our base, and here is our exponent. So logs are really just a way to re-express an exponential equation. So looking at examples 1 and 2, we are given two logs and we need to write them in exponential form. So looking at the first one, it says log base 2 of 8 equals 3. 2 is our base, 3 is the exponent. So the way to write this is 2, the base, to the third power equals 8. Looking at the next one, the one on the right, it says log base 4 of 1 divided by 256 equals negative 4. So again, 4 right here is our base, negative 4 is our exponent. So the way to rewrite this in exponential form is the base 4 to the exponent negative 4 equals 1 over 256. So this is converting from log to exponential form. We also need to be able to do it the other way. Just looking at examples 3 and 4, it says write e each equation in logarithmic form. So these right now are in exponential form. We need to write them the other way. So it's always going to start log. Here our base is 15. Exponent goes on the other side. And then the 3, 3, 7, 5 goes with the log. So I wrote that kind of sloppy. It should be log base 15 of 3375 equals 3. Pause the video and try the next one on your own, please. Example 4. Okay, let's see how we did. It should have been log base 4 of 2 equals 1 half. So again, 4 is the base. One half is the exponent. Okay, so that's the beginning. That's just converting between exponential and log form and vice versa. You also need to be able to evaluate logs, which is examples 5 through 8. So evaluating means you're going to come up with a number. So example 5 says evaluate log base 16 of 4. So I have log base 16 of 4. This is equal to some number. So I'm going to set it equal to x. Now, logs are new for us. We're not really good with logs, so we're going to convert this to exponential form. 16 is our base. x is our exponent. This is all equal to 4. So log base 16 of 4 is equal to x. That's the same thing as 16 of the x equals 4. Now, we learned about this before. This was in the last video. So we have 16 of the x equals 4 to the first. I need to have them in terms of the same base, so I'm going to rewrite 16. 16 is, is 4 squared, and then I have 4 to the first. So this becomes 4 to the 2x equals 4 to the first. My bases are both 4, so I can set my exponents equal. I get 2 to the x equals 1, and x equals 1 half. So that's what it means to evaluate a log. We then have examples 6, 7, and 8. 
which are similar. I'm going to do 6 with you, and then you're going to do 7. So log base 3 of 81 is equal to x. Rewrite this. becomes 3 to the x equals 81. 81 is just to the first power. 3 to the x, I can't re-express that, but 81 is 3 to the fourth. Okay, so I have 3 to the x equals 3 to the fourth. 3 and 3 are the same, so I get x equals 4. Right now, pause the video and try example 7, the one with the stop sign, on your own, please. You should not be using a calculator. Good luck. Okay, let's see how we did. The answer that you should have gotten is negative 8. Negative 8. So if you didn't, find your mistake, please. And then we have one more. It says log base 4 of 0. So I'm going to set that equal to x. Re-express and I get 4 to the x equals 0. Okay. This one's tricky. I just need to think, what power can I take 4 to so that I end up with 0? Well, if I take 4 to a negative number, I still end up with a positive. If I take 4 to a positive number, I end up with a positive. If I take 4 to the 0 power, I end up with 1. There is no power that I can raise 4 to so that I end up with 0. So this ends up being no solution. This leads us to a very, very, very important property. So we're generally going to be looking at log base a of some number b. b always has to be greater than 0. So we never take the log of 0 or negative numbers. So if you would see like say log base 4 of negative 1, we don't take logs of negatives, so that would be no solution as well. Okay, before we move on, there's a quick trivia question for you. In a non-leap year, what month and date can be called the exact middle day of the year? So write down your guess and we'll reveal it in class tomorrow. If you flip to the next page, we're going to move on to graphing. Okay, so now we're taking this same idea of logarithmic functions and we're going to graph them. So the parent function is just f of x equals log base b of x. The domain, well x is what we're taking the log of. When we just talked about you only take the log of numbers greater than 0. So your domain is going to be x is greater than 0. Your range is all real numbers. So although x has the the restriction that it has to be greater than zero, y can be any number that it wants. Your asymptote goes along with the domain, so it's going to be x equals zero. On our graph, that asymptote is going to be here. And remember that our asymptote is not a part of the graph, but it's going to be a line that the graph approaches, but it does not touch. And then generally, the graph is going to have one of two looks. It might look something like this, or it might look something like that. The difference is what the value of b is. If b is between 0 and 1, it's going to look like this bottom graph. If b is greater than 1, it's going to look like the black graph. But in general, you should be hugging the asymptote and then leaving it. Let's jump in and look at example 9. It says f of x equals log base 5 of x. So the domain I already ta told you is going to be x is greater than 0. Your range is going to be all real numbers, and your asymptote is x equals 0. That goes with the domain. So I'm going to graph my asymptote. Now, I'm not just going to guess at what the graph looks like. I'm going to actually substitute in some points. Now, we don't really like this form. Right now it looks like y equals log base 5 of x. Instead, I'm going to write this in exponential form. 5 is the base, y is the exponent, and then x is by itself. 
Now I can make a table. Okay, this is going to be different from pretty much any graphs that you've done before. Because y is the exponent, that's the one that we're going to substitute for. I'm going to substitute 0, negative 1, negative 2, 1, and 2. When I substitute 0 for y, I get 5 to the 0 power, which is 1. That means x is 1. If I substitute 1, 5 to the first power is going to be 5. 5 to the second power is going to be 25. 5 to the negative first power is not negative 5. Don't make that mistake. It's going to be 1 fifth. Sorry, that should be a 5. And 5 to the negative second power is 1 over 25. Okay, now I'm ready to graph. Now I need to be very careful here. Um, be careful that you're graphing x comma y. Sometimes I get mixed, mixed up and I graph y first since that's what we substituted for. I'm going to start at the middle of the table. I have 1 comma 0. So that's here. 5 comma 1. 25 comma 2 doesn't fit on my graph. I have 1 fifth negative 1, and I have 1 over 25, negative 2. These are not going to be perfect, but what you need to know is that 1 over 25 is going to be closer to 0. It's going to be closer to the y-axis. And then I can connect the points. Your graph should go through this last point that mine did not go through. Okay, and you'll notice, because b was greater than 1, 5 was greater than 1, my graph is increasing, as I said in the original function that it should be. You'll notice the domain is x is greater than 0. It only takes on positive values, but the range is all real numbers. It takes on negatives and positives. Okay, let's do one more example, just to make sure we really have this down. So this time we're graphing f of x equals log base one-third of x. Domain, still the same. x is going to be greater than 0. My range is still all real numbers. My asymptote is still x equals 0. Again, it goes with the domain. Okay, so I'm going to put my asymptote on the graph. Now, in order to graph it, I need a table. Remember that this is y equals log base one-third of x. I'm going to re-express this, so I have one-third to the y power equals x. Again, y is the exponent, so that's what I'm going to substitute for. I'm going to substitute 0, negative 1, negative 2, 1, and 2. One-third to the 0 power is 1. One-third to the first power is one-third. One-third to the second power is one-ninth. One-third to the negative first power is not negative one-third. Remember, it means you're going to have to flip it, so it becomes 3. One third to the negative second power becomes nine. And now I'm ready to graph. I always like to start with the middle uh, point. So that's going to be one zero. I then have one third one, one ninth two. Again, these are not perfect, but what you need to know is one ninth is going to be really, really close to the y axis, closer than one third. I then have three, negative one and 9, negative 2, which is going to go off our graph a little bit. And now I'm ready to connect my points. Okay, so just a little, some mental checks. We're going to notice that 1 third is between 0 and 1. So my graph starts high and then decreases. It hugs the asymptote, which is good. My domain and range fit. My domain is x is greater than 0, which fits here because x only takes on positive values. And my range is all real numbers. So now we are finally at the point where you're going to do one on your own. Example number 11 is yours to complete. I will be checking when you come to class tomorrow. Good luck.